Great. So thank you again for joining the Participation Reports webinar. My name is Anna Tolwinska, and I'm a Member Experience Manager here at Crossref. I work as part of the Member and Community Outreach Team, and it's my pleasure to talk to you today about Participation Reports. So I will, um, today I will show you how you can easily track what metadata you're registering with Crossref, why you should be checking the report regularly, and how to interpret the reports. We uh, run these webinars regularly. Um, we try to do it monthly. My colleagues Shane Smolian and Isaac Farley from our support team are also on this webinar and will help me with any questions. So thank you so much both for joining and helping out. Sure, happy to be here. <laughs> hey, everyone. Thank you, Shane. Thank you, Isaac. So before we jump in, I'm going to share a quick poll. Um, so you will see, uh, hopefully you'll see a box pop up in your, um, on your screen. Let me just try it. Hopefully it will work. So I'm going to launch this poll and please feel free to answer. Um, so the question is, all of the metadata I collect is automatically sent to Crossref. Yes, no, or not sure. And I'm going to share the results with you. I'll give everyone a minute to answer. So it looks like the voting has stopped. So I'm going to end the poll and share the results with you right now. So as you can see, 50% um, of not sures, um, and I'm going to ask you, um, actually, I haven't shared it yet. There you go. <laughs> Hopefully you can see it now. Um, so uh, the not sure was a clear winner here. Um, a lot of you said uh, not sure, some said no, and of course we had a few yeses. So I'm going to ask you to keep this poll in mind while uh, I'm presenting and I'm going to get back to it a little bit later on in the webinar, but if you could um, keep this question in mind and, and the answers as well, that would be great. Okay. So um, I'll go ahead and get started now by telling you a bit more about the reports. So what are the reports? They are a place where you can check what metadata you're registering with Crossref. They're open and free to use by anyone, and you can look up any member in Crossref um, that is currently registering metadata with us. They allow you to track your progress, so to track the levels of metadata over time to see what you're registering. Um, this is very handy, especially if you're using um, another a third party service for your uh, content registration with Crossref. So if you're not directly responsible for registering the metadata yourself, it's a really go good tool to um, double check whether all of the metadata that you think is going into Crossref is actually making its way into Crossref. And they also allow uh, our members to see how they measure up to other members, to see, you know, to track their progress over time and just to see where the gaps are and what can be improved. They're about two years old now. We launched them in the summer of 2018. They're still in beta uh, or what we like to call phase one but we're hoping to improve them. So any feedback that you may have would be uh, very valuable. We're hoping to work on a phase two soon. So you may be wondering why we developed these reports. Well, they came about mainly because we have been hearing from our members that they're not always sure what metadata they're registering with us. So we always assume that our members knew exactly what they're sending us, but not, that's not always the case. So we decided to make it easier for our members and for ourselves as well to see what metadata was being registered. 
this data has always been available or for quite some time via our REST API, but not everyone knew how to query the API and it's not very user friendly and it's more geared at machines. So not an easy to use interface, especially for humans. Another reason for the participation reports was that it made it easier for our members to see what's missing and to fill in the gaps and update, update their metadata. So um, how can we expect someone to fix something if they're not sure that something is actually missing? So that was another reason. And lastly, um, the reports allow our members to track their progress to see if they've, what they've updated is actually being reflected in Crossref. So this brings us back to the poll at the beginning of the webinar. Um, you may think you're sending Crossref all of your metadata, but sometimes that's not the case. And this is a very uh, easy way to, you know, to make sure that you are. So where does the metadata that you register in Crossref actually end up? So because Crossref's metadata is standardized and machine machine readable, it is very useful to many different organizations that make your content more discoverable. And this slide shows all of the different examples, um, and there are many more, of how Crossref's metadata or how your metadata is actually being used. So there are um, things like the manuscript tracking services, um, it's being used for measuring, reporting, in uh, metrics, um, helping validate records, uh, fill in metadata gaps, um, you know, match and link citations, um, aggregate and integrate content. Um, there's a variety of different organizations that have services that help researchers and readers, uh, authors as well, um, even publishers. So, um, metadata is very important. And the more that you register, the more useful your content is. So when, when you're registering your metadata, it's very important to make sure that it is correct, that there are no errors, typos, etc., et um, that it's complete so that all the fields that you can manage are there. So not just the first author, but all of the authors publication dates, anything not required as well. So some of our um, basic bibliographic metadata is required, but then the additional metadata is not required and not everyone registers that additional metadata. So we would ask you to submit anything that's not required as well to make it complete, a complete record. You can ask your authors for ORCIDs and funding information as well. And thirdly, you have to make sure that the metadata is up to date and talk to your vendors or to your production teams if you're not directly responsible for registering the metadata as they may all, you know, not always be aware of what you would like them to register in Crossref. And then once, the, once you update your metadata, you can expect it to see reflected in the participation report in about 24 hours. So all updates are free of charge. You can update your metadata. Um, as much as you like um, with um, additional metadata, and it doesn't cost you anything once you, you know, register your DOI the first time. So let's see how um, participation reports actually work. So this is the URL that you would navigate to um, when you want to see the reports. I have this tab open here. So that URL would um, take you to this page with this search box. And what you can do is you can either type in the uh, member name that you're looking for. So if you're looking at your own organization, you would type in your own organization name. Today, I'm going to use um, Hindawi um, as an example uh, because I already looked it up before. It's in the dropdown, but um, so I'm gonna select it. And this is how you would also be able to look up. If you've already looked up your organization, it would be one of the results in the search box dropdown. If you um, ended up on this page and noticed that, oh, this was not the organization I wanted to look up, you can always, always click on find a member to go back to the search box and select you know, the correct organization that you were looking for or another organization that you would want to look up. 
But when you end up on this page, um, this is the main page that displays your report. Um, there are 10 key elements that we think are very important and they're listed here uh, with uh, percentages next to them. And I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but at the top, you will see your organization name and then total registered content items. Uh, that means the total registered DOIs that you have in Crossref. Um, this is also dependent on um, the current content dropdown. So this is a dropdown of a date range. So it always defaults to the current content um, that you've registered with us. And current content means anything that was registered in the year that we're currently in, so 2020, and two previous years, so 2019 and 2018. So this number uh, reflects those um, two and a half years or so uh, that Hindawi registered um, with us. If you wanted to see how many DOIs um, and associated metadata has been registered uh, by Hindawi um, since they joined Crossref, so in all time, then you would select all time. And of course, you can see that number, you know, um, that number grew quite significantly because now we're looking at many years of uh, content registration and additional content types which were registered maybe prior to current content. If you just wanted to look at the historical content, so anything you know, prior to 2018 or current content, you would select back file and that would show you what is the uh, total for historical content uh, registered by Hindawi. Um, but for the purposes of this webinar, we're going to just focus on current content because that's the most recent deposits. Um, so we have a total of about 52,000 registered content items, so 52, over 52,000 DOIs. Um, and all of the different key elements have to do with, you know, that 52,000. So um, if we're looking at the percentages, it is the total percentage um, uh, of content items um, that include references. So 98% of the 52,000 total registered content items have references or citations registered as part of the metadata. So that is what the percentages are all about. And then this drop down on this side um, shows journal articles. So we're only looking at journal articles currently, but if we were looking at all time, we would have a choice of looking at books, conference papers, and journal articles because those were uh, registered in the past. Um, so that gives us an option. And of course, when you navigate to books, there are fewer key elements here um, that you can register. And conference papers have a similar uh, number to journal articles. Uh, but let's go back to current content. Oops. Journal articles, current content. I don't think there are any current content conference proceedings. That's why we saw that yellow. Um, let's go back so maybe I can show you um, if there is no content registered at that specific time. So I selected conference proceedings and then I changed it to current content. So um, how many conference papers were registered in the last two and a half years? We don't see that uh, here and you will get a yellow um, warning that says no content registered for that selected date range. So that is the reason why. Um, so let's go back to journal articles. We are, um, now I will actually describe um, the elements and why they're important. Um, and at any time that you're confused about what you're looking at, you can um, hover over the little eye and it should tell you what, the, um, what you're looking at actually. So references, um, as I mentioned, citations, uh, when you register your metadata, citations are not uh, required, but we highly encourage them, especially, um, and they are required if you're uh, thinking of participating in Cited By, but references um, are really important. They give researchers a vital data point through which to find your content. And um, of course, 
in order to participate in Cited By, you need to register your references. So it's, it's really important. Um, most uh, of our members display references on their websites, but um, equally important or maybe even more important is to include them in the metadata so that all the other services can ingest your citations and that we can match them if you're participating in Cited By and match other um, publishers um, as well. Open references just means that the references that you've registered, so um, it pertains to, to these references. It just means that they're open and available across all of our services and APIs. Um, so if you find that you see a zero next to open references and you would like your uh, references to be shared um, across all of our APIs and services, um, if they're completely open on your website, there's no reason why they shouldn't also be um, included in the metadata and open to for everyone like researchers to uh, query on them. Let us know and we can easily change that for you. Um, so 100% means that they're open and zero would mean that they're not open. Next up we have uh, ORCID identifiers. Um, ORCIDs are uh, really important. They identify authors to help with author name disambiguation. So it's really important, especially if there are authors with a similar name, um, to uh, help distinguish them. So um, if your authors have ORCIDs, we would um, highly encourage you to ask for them and then pass them on to Crossref through the metadata as well. Um, the same goes for funder registry IDs. We have an open funder registry where we collect funder names and match them to funder IDs. And if you have um, funding uh, for your papers, it's really important to, um, uh, to register that in the metadata as well. So you can um, include funder registry ID for your funder. And also if you have any funder award or grant numbers that you'd like to use um, in the metadata as well or register, you can do that um, as well. And we can see that uh, not every you know, article will have a funder and that's why Hindawi is um, a little lower on the funder percentages than um, on the reference percentage because you know, perhaps not every journal, uh, they have a variety of different fields that they um, register for might might have uh, funding information included in um, in the deposit. So those are um, that's funding data. Uh, Crossmark is just a service that we provide to help publishers show uh, whether um, uh, their content that has been published has changed since publication. It has to be a very significant change, uh, an update, not just you know, like a simple typo or anything. Um, so it would be something that would be corrected or retracted and it's, um, it helps publishers to track that through metadata um, so they can uh, register that with us. Um, in this case, um, Hindawi is not participating in Crossmark, uh, but we have other examples of publishers who are and um, then that number would be, um, um, zero would be higher if they were participating in Crossmark. Text mining URLs are um, URLs that you can include if um, you would like uh, researchers to be able to text and data mine your content without having to ask uh, to contact you individually. So it might be set up through your library um, services or if it's open access, um, then you can include an open access um, URL as well for researchers to text and data mine your content. Um, so we allow for that. Um, so there are different types of URLs that you can include in Crossref's metadata. Um, text mining URL is one of them. Um, other URLs that you can include are license URLs. So you can include licenses for open access content like CC BY licenses or just a regular copyright license if your content is not open access or if you just have your own copyright um, uh, license um, for um, so that can be included in the metadata and easily discoverable by researchers who do um, uh, queries on our metadata. 
Um, and then similarity check. If uh, we have a service called similarity check, which allows you to check for any potential uh, uh, plagiarism in your manuscripts. Um, so we don't like to call it plagiarism uh, check. It's mostly similarity check. Uh, because not all similarities, um, you know, are uh, plagiarism. So um, you can, uh, or actually, if you want to participate in similarity check, you have to register a f your full text URLs um, so that our um, uh, Turnitin can um, index your content and keep your full text content in a database that everyone can check against. So that is like one of the requirements of um, similarity check, participating in similarity check, uh, which is highly discounted for CrossRAF members. Um, so that's one of the benefits that we, we offer our membership. And uh, last but not least, abstracts. Um, abstracts are really important because they give more information to your reader about what, um, you know, what content they're reading or what content they might be searching on. So it makes your um, it makes your uh, articles more discoverable. So it's it's quite important to include abstracts. So if you have them, you should send them to us definitely. Um, um, so that is the last um, key element. But all of these elements make your content more discoverable. Um, and as long as you're adding more metadata, um, it just uh, you know puts you on the map and uh, lets others find you. Uh, more easily. Uh, another thing I wanted to point out on the participation report is that you can look up individual journals. So if, if you're a member who has not just one journal, but many journals, um, there you can look at them individually. So um, if we kind of look at the Journal of Applied Ath Mathematics, um, we can see that um, the funder uh, information is not as robust as for some of the other ones. Um, uh, there was another one that I was looking at before. I think it didn't really have any metadata. So um, they tend to you know, vary from journal to journal. So that's just something to keep in mind. If you have a lot of journals, they might not all be um, have the same kind of coverage. Um, so it depends on um, the field and it also depends of course humanities and social sciences might not have as much metadata as um, um, life sciences and stm type um, fields yeah for example this one is doesn't have very good coverage at all it may be a new a new journal who knows uh, but um, it does you know uh, compared to Overall, all of the journals or some of the individual journal metadata coverage, um, it, does, um, uh, it is very different uh, with their coverage. And of course, if you look at back file content, um, Hindawi is really good at um, actually registering metadata for back files as well. But typically, if you visit um, any other member, you, you will see that between the current content and the back file content, there's a big, um, big difference. So there's not as much uh, coverage, um, metadata, you know, uh, coverage for back file content. Um, it's something that we encourage, but we understand that current content is the most important. And then if you have time and the budget and resources, you can um, update the back files as well. Okay. So I think that is uh, it for uh, the demo. Let me see what is next on my slides. Okay, I think I just had two screenshots of what I was just showing you in case my internet didn't work out <laughs> um, or, um, or participation reports actually didn't work out today because sometimes that happens. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and stop the recording uh, portion of the web or stop the portion of the webinar and I'm going to stop the recording right now and I have an activity for everyone.